American circus has been one of thrills, adventure, and sometimes violence. Behind the scenes are many untold tales. One of these involved a quiet, thoughtful man far removed from the tinsel and sandbox. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. Thank goodness you're here, Doctor. This way. this? Do you know her, Doctor? No, I don't. Poor little thing. She must have gotten lost last night in the storm and wandered into the barn. She's got a fever. When I found her, she seemed to be in a kind of a daze. Couldn't understand what she was saying. And then she went to sleep. Coma. She's burning up. Infection of some kind, but it's hard to localize with a child who can't talk. She didn't seem to have any cuts or broken bones. But her shoes were in shreds. And her feet are blistered. 105. We've got to break that fever. Will you get me a bucket of lukewarm water and some towels? Yes, of course. Come in, Sheriff. I got your message, Mrs. Peterson. See the dog's buggy is outside. Yes, he's in the bedroom. Hi, Doc. Well, I never saw her before. How is she? Can't tell until I break her fever. I've been sending telegrams all over the territory making inquiries. Should be getting some answers by tonight. Meanwhile, I want you to quarantine this place until I find out what she has. But I'm sure Mrs. Peterson won't mind. Think she'll get better? You can only hope so. I want you to pick up all the latest papers from as many towns in the territory as possible. I want to study any unusual sicknesses, outbreaks, or epidemics. As soon as I get back, Bill. Her kid, she sure don't look good. One more thing, Sheriff. She was wearing these when Mrs. Peterson found her. It's a strange looking pair of shoes for a kid to be wearing in the desert. I'll see you, Bill. I spent all day and all night with the little nameless girl. A doctor's medical practice is mostly routine, but something about that child bothered me. Hi, Bill. Hey, Doc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm home. Nothing better for a doctor out here and a good, smart team, is it? How's the kid? Much better. Any news? Here are the out-of-town papers he asked for. Not a single missing child reported. Or is that Lacey boy from Chuckawalla, but he's missing about half the time anyway. And he ain't no girl. Uh, she'll be able to tell us who she is as soon as she wakes up. Right now, I'm a little more interested in this. There's an outbreak of meningitis at Barton's Ferry yesterday. Spinal meningitis? No, epidemic meningitis. Very contagious and very dangerous, too. Oh, the kid got the symptoms? Uh, in a general way, yes. Well, I'll put a quarantine notice in the paper right away. terrible has happened. She woke up and I gave her a cup of warm broth and she drank it and she hasn't been able to talk. Oh, I hope I didn't do wrong. Well, hello there. I'm Dr. Bill. What's your name? Tell us where you're from. I'll bet your folks are worried to death. You can understand me, can't you? Well, come on and talk. You can talk. Does 
this fan? Open your mouth now, real wide. Oh, I do hope it wasn't that broth. I'm sure it wasn't. Maybe she'd like some more. Give her all she wants. She's still dehydrated. Now, you stay right here. We're gonna come right back. We're gonna take real good care of you. I didn't want to say this in front of her, but I'm afraid she has epidemic meningitis. Oh, dear. Is there anything more we can do to help her? The worst is over, but I'm afraid the nerves to the vocal cords have been damaged. But they'll eventually heal. Well, generally, no. That's the worst part of this disease. It can paralyze or blind or deafen. In her case, it's settled in her throat. Do you mean she'll never be able to speak again? I didn't say that. But we can always pray for a miracle. Whatever the little girl's background was did not include any schooling. We learned she couldn't read or write. You sent for me, Sheriff? Hello, Miss Applegate. Sorry to bother you, Bill, but uh, Miss Applegate here, as head of the welfare committee, thinks we ought to talk to you. Someone in trouble? I represent the welfare board, and we feel that for the best good of the unidentified child, she be sent to the San Dimas Orphanage, where she can have proper care. Anything you want to say to that, Doctor? Well, before the committee take a vote on that motion, I'd like to make a request. All the tests that I've made to date indicate that that little girl's loss of voice is not due to meningitis or any other disease. My first diagnosis was wrong. What else could it be, Bill? Hysterical paralysis. Result of a terrible shock. You mean something scared her so much that it paralyzed her voice? It's possible. A tremendous shock of any kind can even affect an arm or a leg. A lot of nonsense. I think you're jeopardizing the health of this community by experimenting with this child. And I'm going to report to the state authorities. I'll admit it's new to medicine, but in this case, I think I'm right, and I want a couple of weeks to find out. I'm ashamed to hear anyone doubt Dr. Bill's sincerity after all he's done for us. Now, this little girl is a missing person, and I hereby appoint Dr. Bill Baxter as her legal guardian. But, sure. Now, this meeting is over. Now, scoot. <laughs> Oof. Trouble, trouble. Say, I finally got a line on these slippers, Bill. They're the kind that are used by aerialists and acrobats, you know, in circuses and carnivals. Tie in with something I just noticed about her hands. Her hands? Yeah, they're all heavy calloused in the palms. Could have been caused by anything, maybe even a trapeze. Say, that gives me an idea. Would you like to help me with a little experiment? Might even shock her into talking? Anything you say, Bill. Come on. show you something and I want you to watch real close and tell me if you recognize anything. All right? All right, Sheriff. her background. Did you get any information on circuses or carnivals in the territory? Sure did. Some of at least the old Bucksaw Ranch for winter quarters. You know where it is? Yeah. Put her back to bed. So the old Bucksaw Ranch, huh? That's right, Doc.
Well, you'd better make a deal with the Feed and Grain Association because we'll be here for two more months at least. Now, get out! Hello? I'm looking for the manager. Who are you? I'm Dr. Baxter. I've been taking care of a little child who was lost in the circus, and I'd like to locate her parents. I'm Maria Bellotti. You say you have a lost child? Yes. We found her in a coma. She couldn't even talk to tell us who she was or where she's from. A little girl of eight years old with blonde hair and blue eyes, wearing a blue dress with a little gold heart on the necklace. That's right, ma'am. I don't believe it. Swabby, she's alive. Now, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. I'm sorry, doctor. Just that I've been so terribly upset these past few weeks. It must have been rough on you. Notified the authorities everywhere. Tracers were sent out, letters to hospitals. Nobody could find her. Are you her mother? Stepmother. Her father, my husband. In jail for murder. You said she couldn't talk. I'm afraid not. She's been awfully sick. It's my theory that her throat's been paralyzed by some terrible shock. Must have been when her father, Carlos, killed his partner. Could have been. I'll bring her back and things will be a lot better. I hope so. Thank you, Doctor. I'll be waiting. That? I don't believe it. Not even a coyote could live out where I left her. But she did. I was a fool to take your advice. Why worry? You heard what he said. She can't even talk. I've got to get her back east somewhere. Oh, Leah, don't you think you're making... Shut up! Fred, come here! The old post road on my way back and made it a point to interview Carlos Bellotti, the child's father in the Elkton Penitentiary. This much is true, Doctor. There were bad feelings between my partner and I over Maria. I was jealous and threatened him. Did you set the rig in for their act? Yes, that had been my profession before I became a partner into the circus. But I swear that someone tampered with a top pole. When my partner fell to his death, I was the most tracked person there. And they got you on circumstantial evidence and a powerful motive. Here I am, Doctor. My child, my wife, my circus, all gone. Come in. Well, Miss Peterson, how's our little girl today? Well, I gave her to the man you sent with the note. No. This one. Dear Miss Peterson, please give child a bearer of this note. I have good news, Dr. Bill Baxter. I didn't write this. How long have they been gone? Just a few minutes. Oh, Dr. Bill, how was I to know? Not your fault. I'll need to borrow a horse. Take my buggy and let the sheriff know what's happened. I picked up the stranger's trail. The idea was to catch up with him and the child before it got dark. I knew one thing for certain. Someone, for some reason, didn't want that child to talk.
Robbie. Mrs. Bellotti. Robbie. Robbie, baby. Oh, I never thought we'd ever see you again. This is Mrs. Peterson, Mrs. Bellotti. For the time being, she's acting as nurse on the case. Oh, but that's not necessary. I can take care of her now. I'm sorry, but as her doctor, I can't take a chance on it yet. Robbie. You're back. This is Gil Manners, doctor. He works with me in my act. How do you do? He replaced my husband's dead partner. I don't know what it means to have a back, doc. We can't thank you enough. Now, if it won't be too much trouble, I'd like to have Robbie see every act in the show. <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, she's seen him more than a thousand times. But if I catch an unusual reaction to some particular act, it'll give me something to go on. <sighs> don't you think, doctor, after all the poor child's been through, that it could make things even worse. There's always that possibility. Well, then why don't you let me take care of her, at least until she gets her strength back? Because every day she stays in this condition, it'll be harder to correct. We came at a time when we knew you'd be in full rehearsal. You do want to help the little girl, don't you? <laughs> Certainly. You want to give up? No. Where's your air relax? Outside. Come on, Robbie. Let's go outside. I'm afraid it's hopeless, Doctor. Kind of looks like it, don't it? Have we missed anything, Manners? Well, that's just about it, Doctor. What about your act? The one that killed your husband's partner? Mr. Manners is just taking his place. I'm teaching him the act now. Could you give us a run-through? Certainly not. It's dangerous, and we're just rehearsing. Well, then how about a rehearsal? It doesn't have to be perfect. Afternoon, folks. I'd like to watch a rehearsal of that, too, if you don't mind. Come on, Gil. Why's the sheriff here all of a sudden? I don't know. 
Gil. Gil, I've got the shakes. Uh, no time for that. Take it easy. Something's going on down there, and I'd like to know what. But Robbie can't talk. Stop worrying. That doc isn't doing this for nothing. If it was shot from that fall, she may get her voice back. What if she does? Who will believe her. What'd I tell you? The kid's just sitting there. I'm going on up. your husband of a crime he didn't commit. How do you say that? Because Robbie regained her speech the night you sent someone to kidnap her. She told us what had happened. She's a rotten little liar. Now why did you slip and fall when she called out to you just now? Better think it over. You haven't got much time. Could you make her passing a little easier, Bill? What? Well, I don't think... I sure appreciate it. She's got a heavy conscience. Robbie's right, Sheriff. I did tamper with the rigging. My husband's innocent. There now, don't you feel better? You feel better after this, too. What are you going to do, Doctor? This will help in case of shock. How much longer have I got? You're not going to die. You don't even have any broken bones. This canvas broke your fall. You mean? I mean, you live long enough for the sheriff to get you to trial, and after that, it's up to the judge. Then I'm not sorry. Why, you dirty, rotten, lying double crosser. Doctor, this is all like a dream. I'm afraid to wake up. <laughs> Don't worry. If you wake up, you'll be here. Goodbye, Dr. Bill. <laughs> Come and see us. Why? Well, you're coming right along with me, young lady. <laughs> you're coming right along with me and be vaccinated. And it's just about time. That's right. Doctor knows what's good for you. Coming with me, Daddy? Of course, sweetheart. <laughs> On February 7, 1899, Maria Bellotti and Gil Manners were sentenced to 20 years in the Arizona Territorial Prison for murder. Carlos Bellotti received a full pardon, and Robbie returned to her beloved circus.